Welcome to yet another video on the Technomora channel. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it. Leave your comments down below and please subscribe if you haven't done so already. So now, let me introduce your host for today, Technomora. Thank you, Julie, for this very nice intro. I want to present a new project. And this new project is uh, a 70s black and white TV from the brand Philips and it's a model TX711. Let's discover what's inside of it, shall we? This little TV is, like I said, is a, a Philips Filetta TX711. Okay, and you see the chassis uh, type number which is 12B711 here. Um, this one was probably built originally and sold in Germany and as you can tell it's a 220 volt 27 watts uh, TV set. Um, it apparently can also run on 12 volts DC judging by the state of the screws I would tend to say uh, this little TV has never been opened before so that might be an exciting prospect um, because it would mean that no one except us of course has gone inside this little TV to have a closer look ever since it left the factory very interesting. So I undid the four screws up there, two there, and then two longer ones down here. So now I need to figure out how to open the case without cracking it. All right, all it took was just a, a little tug on the back side of the TV and um, it released a little bit at least from the top you can see there yeah so what we're going to do now is do a reveal of the TV's innards the first time in probably I would say 50 years or so so there you go so now I'm going to grab it by the handle, the carrying handle, and slowly pull it out. There you go. Okay. So this is the inside. Uh, this is the antenna socket on the inside. This is the inside of the TV. And yeah, it has seen work. You can see by the dust and dirt traces. There is a handle on the side of the TV. So here is the inside of the Philips TX711. What's the story behind this TV? Okay. Well, I found this TV in a um, in a pub, and uh, the guy, the pub owner, had this TV standing uh, on some out of the way table, and he said that it was basically a prop. So you know, nothing special, just a uh, decoration, let's say. And he told me, yeah. Uh, the TV probably doesn't work, or actually, uh, when he got it, it didn't work. At least that's what he told me. So, and he got it from a friend. So yeah, um, that's the little story behind this TV. So I told him, listen, I like the design, and okay, it doesn't work anymore, but would you be willing to sell it to me? And he actually said yes. The guy agreed and sold it to me. 
Alright, so um, we're measuring the filament on pins 3 and 4 from the picture tube. Now, um, every vacuum tube, including a picture tube, has a key. And for this uh, picture tube, so the 12 uh, VBG P4, has its key right here where you see that little hole right there. This is the key. So you start counting clockwise, one, two, three, and four. And three and four are the filament connectors. Okay, so I hooked up my multimeter and we're measuring 16 and a half ohms. So, which would mean that the TV probably um, well, will produce a picture. Well, I'm saying probably. Um, it will depend, of course, whether the high voltage is still functional. But let's say there is a much better chance that we'll have a picture uh, out of this TV since, uh, well, the filament of the picture tube is okay. Now let's have a closer look at the board and there are a couple of things that I immediately noticed okay so on the left side here uh, I see this obvious damage here so you can see the these two diodes have been and or this diode here and this capacitor have been pressed inwards Okay, so, hmm, obviously there was some sort of mechanical stress on this part here, so, yeah, but that must have been caused, I think, in the factory, um, and I see the same kind of stress on this power resistor here, so, yeah, it's been bent inwards, so, let's see, there you go. So, and of course, immediately we also notice these fuses. So there's one fuse here, and there's another one there. We'll measure those fuses in a moment. But let's see if we can see any kind of damage. So, right here is what I'm guessing is a power transformer, right below this little cardboard cover here. Okay, so we already saw the high voltage transformer. And then, well, there's not much to tell really, so it, it looks, except of course for a sizable amount of dust and grime, um, I don't see any obviously damaged or burned resistors or capacitors or even transistors all right so normally the the chassis as far as i understand the uh, service manual uh, needs to slide out but there are two screws at the bottom which i suspect uh, keep the chassis in so let's uh, unscrew these and see whether that will release the chassis. So I should tell that this TV stood for a long, long time along the seaside, you know, in some home uh, at the seaside. So I wouldn't be astonished to see some salt corrosion or anything or in this TV, but let's see, okay. Here's the second screw. So now we should be able to slide out the chassis carefully. I had to pull off these two buttons from the front and by the same token I discovered one of the buttons is broken.
with a little bit of careful tugging, the printboard starts to slide inside these black rails. You know, there's one rail on either side. But even so, uh, you still need to unbind this wire loom and it's bound together with this little metal binder here. With a little bit of tugging we can uh, slide out the print board like this. You know, gently tugging on it. And fortunately for us there's only one print board. Okay, oh I also noticed this potentiometer must have had a knock, you know, because you can tell it's not standing very straight and it's t uh, that typical model of cheap, cheapo uh, potentiometer that Philips used to use back in the day. Uh, yeah, it's coming along. Yeah, almost there. Yep, there it is. Okay, wait, I need to unbind the wiring here. There you go. Okay, because we don't want to destroy the TV, do we? So. I unbound the wires, so we give a little tug here. So dressing of wires is important, you know, because if you dress the wiring properly, the wire loom properly, uh, you will get much less interference afterwards. And so, whoop, hang on, because it would seem the front end is now a little bit top heavy. Okay. Voila. So and there you can see one of the broken off knobs remains. Let's pull it off if we can. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah, it's broken alright. So yeah, here are the remains of the lost knob. So, uh, what do we see here? Well, this is the print board. Let's gently put it on its front end and see what's underneath. So there you go. That's the underside of the print board and most probably this is the very first time we see it ever since it left the factory. Okay, so normally before I start this chassis up or this TV up, uh, I would replace the electrolytics first. Now, I would do this despite the fact that some people would argue it's not entirely necessary um, and I could save myself quite a bit of trouble doing it by first trying the TV out. But in my experience even one bad electrolytic cap uh, can do a lot of damage. So, um, what I am going to do is um, resist the impulse to start the TV up and try it out and replace the electrolytics anyway because uh, I want this TV uh, to be a piece in my own personal collection. And uh, I would have replaced the capacitors anyway. So, uh, what I did instead was I cleaned the uh, 
motherboard, so to speak, or the, the main PCB. Well, there's actually, there's only two PCBs, so one over there, a small one, and then the one main one, which is this one. Uh, because it makes my life a bit easier, and it's more pleasant to work on a cleaner PCB. Just in case you wonder why I do, uh, I make all the effort of replacing the capacitors, have a look at the footprint of the capacitor I just extracted there. It was a 47 microfarad capacitor. And do you see the mark on the PCB? It was leaking. I mean, it was physically leaking. So, yeah, the capacitor uh, was, uh, you could safely say, uh, end of life. So that's why I replace capacitors. Okay, here's a first. Um, in all the years that I've been restoring equipment, uh, I've never seen this before. You see, the electrolytic in the center of the screen, of the screen the C311, which in fact is a 100 microfarad, 25 volts. This is the original one. Okay, and it was mounted backwards. So the cathode of the capacitor is pointing to the left of the screen. Okay, and that's how it should be mounted uh, according to the schematic. If you look at the schematic, okay, let me show you. So C311 is right there, okay, and you see the cathode is pointing left, okay. So, uh, what did I notice? Well, uh, the original capacitor, so this one, was mounted in that direction, like this, okay, instead of this one there, it was mounted like this. So it was actually mounted backwards. Alright, so I replaced all the capacitors on the main board. And uh, there are all the capacitors I removed. There are, if I'm not mistaken, there are 25 capacitors, which I removed in all. Uh, I replace them by modern ones that are generally uh, smaller, which is great. Uh, I also cleaned the main board up a little bit, so I dusted it off and, and uh, I cleaned some dirt spots and stuff like that in general. Um, I also um, placed little connectors for the deflection coils so one little one there and the same type of connector for the speaker over there okay so um, yeah I generally cleaned it up a little bit and replaced the capacitors uh, place some uh, a few connectors. If I have to solder and resolder and desolder the wires, uh, I don't know how many times. Then I think it's better to use those little connector blocks in the end. What I propose to do now is hook the TV up to my uh, variac, which is over there. Okay, and then slowly, um, slowly raise the voltage, and then see we get any sort of image at all uh, on the screen, and maybe even sound. Oh, a little detail. So the high voltage cap, which is this here, has two little prongs. Okay. 
but the plastic of the cap is uh, is really stiff. Uh, I mean, I I think originally this cap must have been really rubbery and and pliable, but now it's extremely stiff. So it's kind of hard to get it off and and probably back on as well. Uh, but with a little bit of heat, I can make this plastic more pliable again, and that would probably uh, make it a lot easier for me to plug it back on. So that's what I uh, still need to do, plug this back on, push the uh, print board back into its original place, so all the way forwards. And then we can have a go at switching it on and looking whether it will work or not. Okay, so um, here's the deal. I uh, uh, set the TV uh, at a right angle from us uh, because we want to be able to keep an eye on the voltage and the current. Uh, by the way, the current is uh, indicated by the green uh, numbers over there. And it's at this uh, moment it's zero, uh, since the TV is not uh, working. Um, and uh, I set the volume low. In fact, I switched the TV off completely. So in a moment, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put power on the orange connector block over there which is initially 66 volts AC okay and then we're going to switch on the TV with the volume knob which doubles as on off okay and now we'll see um, hopefully the TV doesn't go boom the voltage is 66 volts and the current is zero, or, well, pr practically zero, okay? So, uh, hang on, let, let me hide, okay. So, here we go. I'm switching the TV on now. Seeing filament. Yeah, there's no current draw. I don't hear any sound either. Okay. Okay, we're at eighty volts, but Nothing happening at 80 volts, so let me see. Let's push it up to 100 volts. Uh, there's no current being drawn at all. I don't see filament glow either. the voltage now to uh, roughly 120. We know 
the TV uh, wasn't getting any power so the filament of the picture tube uh, isn't lighting up I hear nothing in the electronics that would tell me that say for example the the vertical oscillator for the for the picture deflection is working there's no sound coming from the speaker so uh, yeah where would you start with this well you know generally when you're confronted with something like that um, it's really up to basics so uh, let me see um, I'm going to power the TV yeah, like right there okay so I'm putting power on the TV's connector which is that one over there okay and um, and we're going to switch on the TV and then do a few basic measurements. The first thing to do, of course, is to see whether there's any power going into the transformer, which is this thing here, at all. Okay, so we know the TV is plugged in, and I've set the AC power at this moment to be 65 volts AC. So, let's see if that's what we're measuring. Okay, here we go. Sixty-five point six volts AC. Okay, so that's a good sign. That might mean that the TV might work is I'm measuring right here right here okay and I'm uh, measuring the same voltage my uh, variac is putting out so there is a fuse here and I measured that one and it's okay so what else should we measure well when we switch on the tv okay you have the on off switch which is this one here right here okay you see the little symbol here okay that's the on off switch and after the on off switch there is a fuse all right so what I should be able to measure now is uh, I should be able to measure voltage on the secondary of the transformer first to see whether that works and then we can move on to the uh, rectifier bridge and see whether there's power coming out of that. Now mind you I'm going to uh, measure the voltage on the secondary and that will be quite a bit lower than it should be because remember we're only putting 65 volts AC into the primary okay so let me measure and uh, the easiest way to measure that is measuring at the cathode of this uh, of this um, rectifier and at the cathode of that one okay so let me do just that okay so I have to measure at the cathode of D113 and the cathode of D114 okay so well this is my other probe here it is so the cathode of D 113 and the cathode of D 114 okay they are behind the flyback transformer so how much voltage do I measure here 
let's see. 4.42 volts. Okay, I, I hope you can see, you guys can see that, but it's 4.42 volts. Alright, so we know now the secondary <coughs> outputs voltage. So the transformer is okay, and the fuse. Uh, which protects the secondary of the transform is also okay. Fine. Now, what else can we measure? Oh yeah. Now, we should be able to measure the DC being output by the rectifier bridge. Okay, so let's see if you can see it. So, the output of the rectifier bridge is right here. Okay. So if I measure between ground and this point, okay, I should be getting a voltage, let's say, slightly higher than 4.4 volts. Okay, well, let's say somewhere around, oh, I'd say, 5.5, maybe 6 volts, right here. Okay, so let me do just that. Alrighty, um, so I'm measuring between ground and plus, now let me set the meter to DC volt. Uh, which point should I measure? Oh, okay, I should measure at the output of the, um, of this fuse here, so right here at this type point right here. Okay, so let's see how much do we get here? 96 volts, okay, almost 5 volts, perfect, now let me measure on the other side of the switch, zero, nothing, okay, so it's obvious that the switch isn't working for some reason, so what I need to do next is, um, well, Either I uh, repair the switch, or I temporarily bridge the switch, and then I move on. Um, and I propose that I do the second thing. So, uh, just for the sake of adventure, let's say, let me bridge the switch first, and once that is done, then we'll move on and see whether we can make the TV work. Alright, so I...
temporarily tack together the two wires that go to the switch down there together and uh, I covered them with a little bit of heat shrink okay just to make sure that I don't get electrocuted now um, like I said I'm going to measure the DC now right there at the fuse which is at the output of the power supply let me show you so what am I talking about well I'm going to measure the voltage right there right behind the fuse okay actually I'm measuring it right now right before the fuse so the fuse is that little thing over there that where I'm pointing at and I'm going to measure right after as well okay so I set the variac to 66 volts AC now um, well let's uh, and I'm measuring the voltage remember at the output of the rectifier bridge oh and by the way the rectifier bridge is formed by these two diodes you see here okay right here there's D114 and D113 the other half of the rectifier bridge is down there okay you see them there right there okay so let's switch on and see what happens there you go all right so I'm measuring at one end of the fuse and I'm getting 4.27 volts and there's no glow coming from the filament again I'm not seeing any picture on the screen or anything so hmm so let's go to 90 volts all right the output of the power supply is now 6.3 volts and I'm looking at the filament but I'm not seeing anything the glow right now the TV is not drawing any power as far as I can tell okay so you can see there the the amperage is zero and I'm pumping in a little bit less than 90 volts AC but yeah the power supply gives 6.31 volts no filament okay can't hear any sounds either so what's happening right well, not much for the moment. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, and there's no picture there either. So, let me pump up the voltage a little bit. Say to 120. I'm going in increments of 30 volts. So, there you go. supply is now outputting almost 9 volts DC no current draw as yet and I don't see oh I think I think I'm beginning to see a filament glow right there I think you guys can see it too you see there the filament is starting to glow very faintly but it is glowing okay 
Is there any image? No. Okay. Let's pump up the voltage to 150 then. Starting to draw current. And now it's outputting sound. And the filament is blown. But do we have any image? Uh, 
like this, it, it actually almost overpowers the camera, okay, so, yeah, and the camera is then trying to adapt to the intensity uh, of the screen and such, but, you know, for our purposes, it's better to keep the luminosity low. The picture is, therefore, surprisingly bright. I mean, yes, it's incredibly bright. Um, and I, you know, I was looking at the picture and I thought, well, you know, probably what was the saving grace, you know, what, what saved this little TV from ending up uh, completely busted, actually, and broken, was the on-off switch actually failing, you know? So, the on-off switch, which is right here, okay, which doubles as a volume button, uh, failed, and it failed probably after maybe a few years, a couple of years or so, maybe even three years, and the owner, uh, and since the TV couldn't be switched on anymore, I think the owner just reasoned, well, you know, this is just a very cheap little TV. I'm not going to bother with it. And he stored it away anywhere, somewhere, in an attic or so. And that probably uh, saved the TV from being junked. And uh, it also saved its screen, because the CRT is incredibly bright. The sound works as well, you know, if I inject sound, let's see, right here. There you go. So yeah, there's, there's sound too. Uh, it's not hi-fi quality, obviously, but, yeah, the sound works as well. Alright, so, to rotate the deflection coil, which is this whole copper assembly you see on the neck of the picture tube, uh, technically, all I need to do is to release this screw here, so that I can rotate the whole assembly left to right, okay? Uh, and that would, um, yeah, that would be, enable me to rotate it and to correct for that angle we saw earlier on the test image. Uh, you remember the test image was off from the horizontal by, well, I'd say, three or four degrees, okay? So, what I need to do to correct that is rotate the deflection coil clockwise by the same amount, so by 3 or 4 degrees, uh, in that direction. Now, um, I've already felt around with my finger around the, the rubber, uh, which is clamped around the neck of the tube, and it really feels not pliable at all. So I'm kind of afraid that, you know, uh, the coil might have become stuck to the back of the TV as well. So I have to be really careful now, uh, and I'll need both my hands. So give me a minute to release this clamp here, and have a closer look whether I can safely rotate the whole deflection coil assembly. Alright, so I rotated it uh, clockwise and I would say I am nearly there. I think I over rotated it now a little bit too much. So I need to go back by maybe, oh, I'd say, half a degree, maybe, counterclockwise to correct it. So, uh, yeah, I think we're almost there. Yeah? If I look at the convergence pattern, it looks okay, although not quite perfect yet. If you look at 
the multiburst, you can clearly see the picture is rotated a bit too much the other direction now, okay? So you can see at the by this white edge along the picture here that uh, I've rotated a bit too much. So give me another moment to correct that and then we'll have another look at the picture, right? I think a word of caution is in order right here. Um, I may not have said this before, but if you're going to work on a, an appliance like a TV, and certainly one of the old style TVs like this one is, you should be aware that um, if you're not careful, you might get zapped, painfully so, by the high voltages inside of uh, the TV, okay? So not only there is um, AC inside the TV, uh, so in this case 220 volts AC, there's also high, literally high voltage inside of it as well, coming from uh, the uh, deflection coil, I should say the high voltage coil down there, okay? So we're talking about voltages of around 10 kilovolts. It might not kill you, but it will certainly hurt you. So if you're going to work on something like this, um, you do so at your own risk. Alright, so the on-off switch and volume potentiometer is this one right here. Okay, I'm going to see if I can give you just a little bit more light. There you go. So, we're going to unmount this potentiometer to work on it. So, I'm, I need to unsolder it first. And I'm going to use my unsoldering gun for that. So here we go. I 
And there you go. Here it is. And the culprit is this end right here. The on off switch. Alright, so I gave the little thing a cleaning um, with a very soft wire brush and a little bit of contact cleaner. I used my man oil contact cleaner and I'm really really happy with it. Not that I'm particularly advertising it but it always did a great job at cleaning contact. So now the potentiometer turns freely and nicely around so let's reassemble it and see if my cleaning did the job. Alright, so <coughs> reassembling the switch took me a little while, maybe 15 minutes or so. It's quite finagly putting it back together again, but I think now it works. So now the switch is open. Okay, so now let's turn the switch and watch what the meter says. There you go. And now it's closed. So the closed switch has about the resistance of one and a half ohms. Maybe a little bit less. Alright. So now let's switch it off again. So uh, there you go. Now it's open. Now it's closed. The resistance of the potentiometer is 4.96 kilo ohm.